Good evening, everyone. My name is Shane Gebauer. I'm the general manager of Brushy Mountain Bee Farm. I'd like to welcome you all here this evening to uh, learn a little bit about making skin cream, uh, specifically using hot, uh, products from the beehive, beeswax and honey and, and such. The plan for this evening uh, is to go through a couple of recipes that we've got. It shouldn't take too terribly long, and so there'll be hopefully plenty of opportunity for questions and answers. Uh, I don't claim to be an expert in skin cream or, or the like, but uh, hopefully what you'll find here this evening will be informative and give you the inspiration to go forth and, and make some of your own products. So to start off with, we've got uh, some basic skin cream. Here you can see a lotion bar on your left and a small little container, a two ounce container of some skin cream on the right. Let's first, uh, before we get into how we made those, talk a little bit about some of the ingredients. And I'm not going to dwell too terribly long on this and, or go into, into these various things uh -oh, too, uh, too thoroughly. Uh -oh. I'm experiencing technical difficulties. Sorry about this. Just had a little flash there. Let me just make sure, okay, and go back into the slideshow here. Sorry about that. There we go. All right, we're back. Sorry about that. Um, so I'm not going to go into this too much, uh, but here are some of the ingredients that we used in the, the products that we'll discuss tonight, the, the recipes that we're going to use tonight. We've got shea butter, cocoa butter. These are are solid at room temperature. The shea butter is a little soft. I'm try I was trying to think of uh, sort of a consistency that I could convey to you that would help you understand a little bit about uh, what shea butter is like if you've never felt it or, or handled it. It's, it's sort of like um, kind of a firm butter, actual butter that you might have in the refrigerator or out on the counter. It's not quite as hard as it would be if it were in the fridge, but a little bit firmer than if you left it out on the counter. Uh, and cocoa butter is probably closer to what it uh, would be like if you pulled that stick of butter out of the fridge. It's a little bit harder than shea butter. Of course, these two things, while they're called butter, have absolutely no connection to milk butter that we use in our cooking and things like that. Um, they come from plants. And the shea butter uh, has some, okay, um, some UV protection. Uh, it soothes sunburn. It helps with uh, some skin conditions. It uh, helps with dry skins, wrinkles, stretch marks. Uh, cocoa butter is very high in antioxidants. Whenever we say antioxidants and talk about skin, it helps uh, with typically in some degree with uh, prevention of skin cancer, stretch marks. Um, my wife, when she was pregnant, had, uh, they called it belly butter, and it was just about all cocoa butter that helped with uh, stretch marks um, when for expecting mothers. It keeps the skin soft and supple, so it can sort of stretch and contract. Sweet almond is a liquid at room temperature. It's easily absorbed into the skin. It's often something that's incorporated into recipes when we talk about apotherapy. It sort of have a, has a soothing effect on sort of a person's uh, relaxation state. Goodness gracious, is this going to do this all night? I hope not. Um, it, uh, uh, we've got olive oil, which prevents um, evaporation, which is good, so if you apply it to your skin, it helps prevent the further loss of moisture from your skin. Again, high in antioxidants, soothes sunburns, skin conditions, etc. Uh, coconut oil. These are considered oils, but they're uh, often de solid, close to room temperatures. If you're in a warm room, sometimes they'll turn liquid. Um, it helps, the coconut oil helps hold the moisture, and it doesn't rub in very easily. Um, so sometimes you don't want to use a whole lot of coconut oil in your recipes because it can create sort of a greasy, oily feel, but it does help keep skin soft. Palm oil, again, antioxidant, uh, very high in uh, antimicrobial uh, properties, which is good for skin complexion and uh, skin uh, antioxidants are also good. Um, 
uh, antioxidants are good for anti-aging as well as uh, uh, skin uh, cancer. The, uh, of course, the reason why most of you are here this evening, I presume, is because you want to know how to use some of the beeswax that you've gotten from your beehives and also how to use some of your honey in these recipes, both of which have excellent, excellent properties when we're talking about skin care. So beeswax, uh, it can create a, a protective non-clogging, and I sort of say non-clogging layer because a lot of times people associate beeswax with sort of this heavy film almost that forms on your skin that clogs your pores. And that's not at all the case when incorporated with some of the other ingredients that we mentioned. Uh, beeswax of all of the products that we've talked about so far is the hardest and so it often is a hardener. If you use too much sweet almond or olive oil or uh, even shea butter, it, it will be too soft. And so therefore, it will, um, if you've got it in your pocket, it may melt, uh, which would be terrible. Um, it may be too soft when you go to sort of uh, uh, scrape a little out or, or, or uh, take a little out of the container. Um, and so beeswax can help harden these up. Uh, it also is very high in antimicrobial properties. It helps with moisturizing. It also works well in emulsions. And this is important, too, because a lot of recipes that you'll find out on the Internet, uh, and there's tons of them, you can just Google uh, beeswax skin cream, and you'll come up with a whole slew of possibilities for you to experiment with. But uh, it works well in emulsions, and this is important because a lot have water. And when we talk about some of the things that we just mentioned as ingredients, the shea, the cocoa, the coconut oil, the palm oil, etc., oils, fats. So when you add water, water and oil do not mix. Water and fats do not mix. And so beeswax can help a little bit uh, incorporate that water into some of the other ingredients, as well as there's some others. Borax helps with that a little bit. We don't, we're not going to experiment with that here this evening, but that's also a, a good product to help with um, some emulsions. Honey, uh, very good for skin uh, moisturizing properties. It's antioxidant and, again, antimicrobial. Um, some uh, uh, anecdotal evidence for you as to the benefits of these in skin cream. Uh, I have a friend that has uh, a very bad case of uh, psoriasis and I've given him some of the skin cream that I've made in the past with beeswax and a little bit of honey uh, and using that he can avoid using uh, steroid cream which was prescribed by a doctor for um, his symptoms. So just at one anecdote but there's slews of them out there if you start digging into this a little bit. And of course, there's a whole bunch of other ingredients out there that you can use. We'll talk a little bit about essential oils so you can scent your, your products. Uh, those aren't listed here. I've seen uh, pollen and propolis incorporated in. There's other oils. There's aloe vera. If you've got an, uh, an aloe plant uh, in your house, you can, you can squeeze a little bit of that into your recipe and incorporate that aloe gel into your um, uh, your your recipes. So there's a whole slew of other things. These are just some of the basics and the ones that we're going to be playing with here this evening. So let's cut right to it. Let's get to some skin cream. I'll mention that this this particular recipe, for me, I liked the consistency. Um, it, it was easy enough that you could sort of put your finger into the container and get a little out um, on your hand without having to sort of dig in. A lot of times I've felt I've gotten some skin cream that is, is very hard, almost too much beeswax, and you almost have to scrape it with your fingernail or really sort of rub it, rub it, rub it, get it good and warm so that you get enough on your hands to sort of uh, cover your, your hands. This, for me, was a nice consistency. What I would suggest is once you've gotten all these things melted and before you add the essential oil, you can take a spoonful out and pour it onto a little bit of wax paper or your countertop, if you don't mind that, and let it cool And before you pour, pour it in the containers. And what happens then is it's cool. You can actually experiment. Your house, your counter, whatever is you know, 
65, 70, 75 degrees, depending on how you like your, your rooms. Rub it a little bit. See how it feels. Is it soft? Is it hard? And then you can adjust the recipe. If it's a little too soft, add a little bit more beeswax. If it's a little too hard, maybe add a little bit more sweet almond um, or maybe uh, a little bit of shea, depending on what you want. And it will thin out just a whisker with the essential oil, but not a whole lot. So you can test your recipe to get it just the way you want. I'll mention one thing here, though, that if you do that, if you decide to sort of tweak a recipe, either this one or one you find on the web, make sure you keep track of how you are tweaking it. Not just simply that, oh, I'm going to throw in a little bit more beeswax. Because then the next time you go to make it, you, won't ha you know that two ounces of beeswax isn't enough, but you don't know exactly how much you put in on your last recipe. So weigh it out. Uh, don't just sort of wing it. Because then rep if you wing it, replication becomes difficult for future recipes. So keep track of what you're adding and how much. Measure it carefully. So here's the setup. Before we get started, we want to make sure that we've got everything we need uh, to get started. You can see our ingredients here. We've got some essential oil. We've got the beeswax. We've got this double boiler here. Um, we've got, or not double boiler, a hot plate, which we're going to create a double boiler using this pot and this pour pot. We've got the cocoa butter, our oils, our, our shea butter containers, a whisk. Um, everything that we need to, to uh, get started. And one of the things when you're, when you're making these products is weighing out your ingredients very, very carefully. So this is some shea butter that's going on to a scale that's accurate to a tenth of an ounce. Here is the oil, just measuring it out into a little bit of a, a, a little Dixie cup so it's easy to pour in. And again, so we can measure it accurately. Uh, so that we get a consistent product from batch to batch. And here, this is, this is really easy. This is uh, a stainless steel pot, that, a cheap pot that we picked up at you know, uh, just a, a, a local store. doesn't have to be anything fancy. And this is the pour pot that we've got in our catalog. Put some water in there, put the pour pot right in it. Here's the beeswax all weighed out into the, uh, the pour pot. You can see that we've got this heating by the bubbles down here. So it just begins to melt down here. You can see that uh, the beeswax is pretty much melted. And this is all the uh, cocoa butter starting to melt into the pour pot. And the nice thing about this is that when we're ready to pour, it's already in a container that we can use to pour. We don't have to transfer it to something else. So this is a very simple, very inexpensive setup um, to, to get you started. You don't need fancy equipment. So you want to get all of this just to the point of uh, it being melted. You don't want this just blazing hot. Uh, if you get it that hot, what, what will happen is when you pour it into your containers or into your molds or whatever it is you're putting it in, it could deform the plastic container or the plastic mold. Or if it's glass, it may crack the glass. So you want to get this just to the point where everything is melted. And so here you can see there's still some chunks in here. There's still some melting that's occurring. We're not quite there. Beeswax, which has the highest melting point of these ingredients, melts at about, give or take a little bit, 145 degrees. So that's you typically, if you get it up to about 155, 160 degrees, you're in pretty good shape at that temperature range. So here it is all melted. Now there's something in these two photos, um, and I know I'm covering this one up a little bit, but we can still see enough of it for me to point out a, something that hopefully you can see on your screens at home. And that is that all of these uh, um, butters and beeswax is melted. But if we look, sort of look up at this area in this picture, notice how sort of smooth it looks, how kind of transparent those oils and, and wax and, and butters are. And if you look at this picture in the same area, it looks like the bottom of the pour pot sort of dimpled. It's got texture almost. You can see these little, these little pockmark-like things, or what appear to be little pockmarks on the bottom of the pour pot. What that is, is the honey. At this point, I have added the honey. And remember, honey is water-based. It's not fat oil-based. So what we've got in this first picture are fats and oils. 
in this picture, we've got those fats and oils with a little bit of water in them now, that honey. And so that honey is separating out in our solution. And that's something to be very uh, cautious of because if you add too much honey to your recipe, it may separate out in the containers before they have a chance to cool and suspend that honey within the other uh, ingredients. It may settle out to the bottom. So that's what we're seeing are these teeny tiny little drops of honey that I whisked this to begin with. Uh, and now I've let it sit for a bit and those, that honey is starting to settle back out. So the trick to this is that um, we'll whisk it up just before we're ready to pour. But before we pour it, we've got to add our essential oils. You don't want to add the essential oil too early in the process. You want to wait until it's, you're just about ready to pour because what happens is the, the fragrance, the oil, will evaporate rather quickly at, at higher temperatures. And that's another reason why you don't want to get this, this solution that you've got here blazing hot, because if you do, you'll just evaporate all your essential uh, oils, and therefore you won't have any fragrance. You want to get it just warm enough that everything's melted. You want to add your essential oils and then pour it so they don't have an opportunity to evaporate, because, of course, that, does, that will not scent your... Um, your end product. So we're adding some essential oils. Here I am whisking uh, this, this hot solution. So you've got to be careful. This is about 160 degrees, so it does have potential to burn. So you want to be careful. You can see that I don't have a whole lot in here. Um, it's a rather large container, so I don't have to worry about it splashing and sloshing out of this container and getting on my skin. Um, but I'm whisking this up so that I've got that uh, honey um, homogenized essentially through all my other ingredients. You've got to mix it up and then as soon as I do, I take it out and I make sure I wipe all of uh, the pour pot down. This has come out of the, the hot water bath, so there could be some water droplets on the outside of this. There will be some water droplets on the outside of this. And as you're pouring, you don't want that water accidentally dropping uh, into the containers in which you're pouring your skin cream. So here I am pouring the containers. Now when I was, I was doing this up in our, our store, I lined all these containers up along the edge of the table and someone commented, you know, you've got this big table, why are you crowding everything to the edge? Well, the reason for that is when you first start to pour, it's easier if those containers are close to the edge so that you can sort of almost have the pour pot below the level of the table. So you can get the uh, pour pot very close to the container. If I had it more, if these, these containers were more in the center of the table, I'd have to hold the pour pot up higher and I have more uh, opportunity, more of a risk of either missing the container altogether or splashing uh, and splattering, which will make a, a mess of the containers, a mess of the table. So line them up around the edge and work around the edge. So I'm pouring them, and here it is, the finished product. You just wait for it to cool. This is a two-ounce container. Here's the finished product. Um, it, uh, it's, I think, a rather nice consistency. It's easy to get out of that container without really having to dig at it, but it's not so soft that uh, it, it, when you go to sort of scoop it out with your finger, um, it doesn't instantly melt off your finger. Uh, it's, but everyone's going to want a slightly different recipe. Some people like it a little creamier. Some people like it a little harder. Uh, it all depends on your preference. So you can tweak the recipe as necessary. Um, these containers have a foam uh, top, which will seal when, when applied, when it's screwed down. So it's a little safety seal, which is nice. Um, and there is your first batch of skin cream. Let's talk about a lotion bar. Uh, lotion bars are growing in popularity over the past couple of years. It's nice. You can uh, use it like a bar of soap, except it's not soap. It's lotion in a, in a hard state. So you pick it up. You sort of rub it uh, with your hands as you would maybe a bar of soap as you're sort of washing your hands. And in doing so, it warms that bar uh, some of the uh, material, some of the, the ingredients sort of get warm and melt, and you get a nice layer of moisturizing uh, lotion on your hands. You can put these in uh, plastic bags or in a tin like this is nice. 
so that you can carry it in a purse or uh, leave it on the counter, whatever the case may be. Uh, but it's a nice container to keep it kind of clean and, and neat, and, and you can throw it in a, a bag or something, and it doesn't rub up against all your your uh, wallet and keys and whatever else uh, you may have in your purse if you're carrying a purse. So let's talk about how we made these. This is, again, a lotion bar, and here's the recipe. It's pretty much, it is, equal parts beeswax, olive oil, and shea butter, three ounces of each, with a few drops of essential oil. And the essential oils up to you, we used in this particular one, uh, lilac. Um, in the uh, lotion, or in the skin cream, uh, the previous recipe, I used cedar wood, which was nice, not my favorite. Probably would do a different, uh, a different uh, scent uh, if I made that again, which I do plan on doing. But cedar wood's okay, just not my favorite. Uh, this was lilac. So again, melting the ingredients, we throw the beeswax in, we throw the shea butter in, our double boiler. You can see it's the same setup, the pot with the water on a, on a hot plate, melting the, the ingredients, adding the olive oil, again, measuring it out, weigh it carefully so that you get consistent bars from uh, batch to batch, and uh, a couple of drops of the uh, essential oil. Again, make sure that you rub the uh, pour pot clean with a, with a paper towel or a rag or something. You can see the uh, drops of water here. The last thing you want to have happen are these drops of water to get into your container or your mold and, and ruin your product. So make sure you wipe it off before you get anywhere near those containers. And then... Uh, Use a mold of your choice. With the lotion bar, you need a mold of some type. You could pour it directly into that metal tin, but just know that it's going to be a, a very hard uh, product, and so you won't be able to sort of really get much on your skin if you're sort of rubbing it. Uh, but maybe some people like that. So here, in this case, this is actually a soap mold that we used. Uh, and notice in the background here, in this one which I've already poured, I didn't fill it up all the way. Well, because I knew I wanted to package these in the tin, and so what I did was I sort of slid the tin underneath the mold to mark the upper edge of the tin, therefore the height at which I needed to fill this mold, and I only filled it up to that point so that when, it, when I pop this bar out of the mold, uh, it will fit inside the tin. The lid will be able to fit on without smooshing the bar down into the tin, if that makes sense. Here's another one. This is our, our Queen Bee Cake Mold. These are nice. Uh, it's a little bit thinner bar. You'll see that in a second. But pouring the, uh, the lotion material in, you can see that this is the Queen Bee Cake Mold. And it started to, the, the bar has sort of started to separate from the edge. And this mold is flexible enough. You can sort of just bend it a little bit, push down with your thumbs and these bars will pop out onto the table. If you have a, uh, a difficult time getting them out, here you can see this is in a, a little bit frosty freezer. Looks like we need to defrost. But um, you can put this in your freezer. That will cause these bars to shrink a little bit more, and it will detach from the walls. And here it works so well that when I actually went to flip the mold over, they just instantly fell right out on me uh, without much effort at all. So this, this is sort of a live action shot that we were able to catch, uh, um, which turned out quite nice. So they popped right out after being in the freezer. And then you've got to package them. So here's that finished bar. Here's the other side of that mold. It's got the little bee. It's got some flowers. And you can see how it's fit in the tin here. And uh, because I didn't fill that mold all the way up, this B is just about, just a little shy of this upper edge, so when you put the lid on, you don't smush the B. The container gives it a nice uh, uh, container to hold that bar, so you've got some place to keep it and can carry it around with you. That's it. That's all I've got. Like I said, it's a fairly quick, easy process. Um, let me pull up my questions here, see if we can't uh, get some questions answered. Give me one 
second as I pull these out. And like I said, I don't claim to be a, uh, a professional skin care uh, person, but we do, I have made this in, uh, in the past. Let's see. Can I get a copy of this? I don't really want to take notes. Absolutely. All our webinars, uh, in after two days usually of, of airing as we are now, we post them to our YouTube channel. So all our past webinars are up there on our YouTube channel. We've got some up there on uh, candle making, lip balm. Uh, we've, of course, all sorts of beekeeping webinars. Uh, you can go to our channel, and, and this should be there in about two days. It usually takes us that long to get it converted into a format we can upload and, and get it posted. Um, the essential oils you sell, why uh, do they not have a plastic top that is like a dropper on the top? Um, because if we got the container um, like that, it would probably add quite a bit to the cost of the essential and fragrance oils that we carry. We try and carry the, the oils at a price that's affordable. They can be very expensive, the oils themselves. And um, if you've got a container like that, most of the cost would actually be in the container. I noticed that shea butter granulated when my lip balm got cold for a period of time. Do you know why it kept, do you know how to keep it from granulating? Um, I'm assuming that the shea butters was something else besides just the, um, uh, rather than just simply shea butter. And I'm guessing that whatever it was that you uh, incorporated with it, either they weren't mixed properly, thoroughly, so they were somewhat separated, or um, it may be that um, the rate of cooling was such that, uh, well, no, that wouldn't really work because once they're melted. Um, I'm I'm going to say that it was probably because the two, whatever it was that you had together, um, were really whisked together. If you do have a problem, you can add a little bit of an emulsifier to help blend those two things together. Uh, did food grade? Do you use food grade olive oil right from the grocery store or specific type on the internet? Well, of course, if you're using something that you're going to put on your skin, I always would like to see food grade quality um, materials. You don't want something that's sort of off spec, which you could end up with. Um, you can use uh, olive oil from the grocery store. It can get kind of expensive. We do carry olive oil uh, in our catalog, which is a little bit, uh, it's meant for uh, soaps and, and skin care products. So it, it, uh, it can be a little bit cheaper. Um, how do you package the one ounce lotion bars? A one ounce lotion bar um, would be pretty small. Um, we did use our guest soap mold, which is about uh, an ounce and three quarters. And it's about uh, an inch and a quarter in diameter, roughly, I'm guessing on that. And you can package it up in a little cellophane bag with a little raffia or something like that to tie it close. That would probably be your best bet. Or uh, you may be able to find a tin that would hold it. Something that size, uh, I don't think our small metal tin would work. How long does the lotion bar last before going bad? It'll last uh, quite a while. The olive oil in there is, is probably the most um, likely to, to go rancid first. Uh, the shea butter right along with it. Um, the beeswax does help sort of prolong it. There's the antimicrobial properties in the beeswax, and olive oil has those properties as well to some degree. But it'll last uh, several months. I don't know for certain, but I would say several months. Probably you, you, if you use it, if you make them this time of year, you would use it up throughout the course of winter uh, before it went bad. Here's a question. What, at what point is the shea butter added and the sweet almond oil? The, uh, I always start with the beeswax, or I try to, because it is the hardest. It's got the highest melting point, so it usually takes the longest to melt. So I usually start with the beeswax and then try and go sort of in descending order in terms of 
uh, how fast something is going to, to melt. So beeswax, uh, shortly thereafter, once I got the shea butter weighed up, uh, I threw that in on top of the beeswax. And then once I had the sweet almond uh, oil, which is already a liquid, it doesn't really need to melt. Um, but it does help facilitate the melting of that beeswax and shea butter because it's a, it's a liquid that sort of in, envelops the product the other ingredients, I should say. Um, but once I had that sweet almond oil weighed up, I threw that into the pour pot as well. Do you ever use lanolin in conjunction with beeswax, honey, etc. in your recipes? Uh, lanolin is excellent, but it is rather expensive. Um, but yes, it's a very, very nice product to use in skincare recipes. There's a book um, which I'm fairly certain is out of print. Uh, it's Ellen White is the author, and I forget the name of it, but I can picture the book. Uh, the one that I've got sort of got a, a blue color to it. Um, she uses uh, a, makes a skin cream recipe uh, that's in that book that uses lanolin, and I believe that recipe you can find uh, online as well. How do you clean the pour pot between uh, different batches? So. Uh, in this case, we did do back to back the skin cream and then the lotion bars. So the lotion, or I'm rather, I'm sorry, the skin cream. We filled all those containers, so I basically poured everything out of the pour pot. Of course, there is still some residue, so we took a, a paper towel, wiped it out while it was still hot. If it sort of turned hard, turned solid on me in that pour pot, the residue, I just simply threw it back into the double boiler got the uh, pour pot hot again, so the film that may have been on the inside melted and then wiped it clean with a paper towel. At that point, it's you're basically dealing with a, a fat or an oil or grease, essentially. Um, so you can use hot water and, and uh, liquid dish soap to wash it out, which is what we did at the very end to clean up uh, everything. Uh, but between the two recipes, all I did was wipe it as clean as I could with a paper towel. Uh, how do you cut the beeswax to measure out the appropriate amount? That's, that's a great question. Now, I had the advantage, if you noticed in one of the slides, you could see it was almost cut. Well, it was. We've got a saw here that we use to cut our beeswax uh, to, when, we, when we ship it out to our customers. So I just simply went back there and cut it. Not all of you, many of you, if, if any of you, have that luxury. So what I'll do is um, you can freeze the block. Like if I go back up to the top here where I showed that picture of, oh, gracious. Um, sorry about that. Um, the block, there we go. This block right here, you can put that in the freezer. Uh, and then put it in a bag and smack it with a hammer and that cold beeswax will shatter. That's a bit messy, but it will give you large chunks. And then what you can do is um, as sort of your prep work, maybe the day before or the week before, you're going to do something like this. You can take some of that beeswax. You could even take that whole block if you wanted to. Put it into your pour pot. That's, that's sitting right there, put it into that double boiler and melt just the beeswax. Melt the beeswax down, get it so it's, it's, it's liquid, and then take a, uh, a cookie sheet or like a roasting pan that's lined with wax paper and take that melted beeswax and pour it onto that wax paper. And what will happen, of course, is it's going to run. So make sure it's, it's something that's got a, a lip so it doesn't run all over your counter and all over your floor. Uh, and it stays on the wax paper. But you're going to pour it out onto that wax paper and let it, and let it uh, solidify. Well, now what you've got is beeswax that's about an eighth of an inch thick and peels right off of that, that wax paper and can easily be broken up by hand. And so you take the block, put it in the freezer, smack it. That gives you large pieces. And so maybe you've got a chunk that's uh, 2.8 ounces and you need 3 ounces.
then you turn to those that thin uh, layer that you poured out on the wax paper and you sort of break up a couple of pieces and throw it on your scale to get the extra point two ounces that you need to sort of uh, balance it out. That's the easiest way to do it. Um, could you use candle release in the molds also? You can. Uh, I don't like to use it if I can avoid it because it's a silicone, right? And this is something that's going to be rubbed on your skin. And, and not that uh, I don't believe rubbing that product on your skin would be terribly awful, but you're trying to create a product that is is uh, healthy, that's natural using your beeswax and honey, something that's clean and pure, or at least has that impression. And you, using that silicone spray gets a little residue on the outside, so I try and avoid that if possible. Um, let's see. There's... So, okay, so here's the question. Is the two ounces, I assume this is referring to um, some of the oils that we uh, used here. Is the two ounces by weight or by volume? Everything provided was by weight, except, you know, if I said three tablespoons, obviously that's a volume recipe. But in the case of this skin cream, um, it's 12 ounces by weight, three and a half by weight, so two ounces by weight, uh, etc. cetera. So um, everything's by weight. Is the honey enough of a preservative or do you need to add vitamin E? Uh, or another natural preservative. You certainly can add vitamin E. It wouldn't hurt. Uh, but uh, the honey, as well as beeswax, is going to uh, provide some good long shelf life. I have some uh, lip balm that I made uh, last year that, uh, as our temperatures here have turned chilly, uh, I've turned to that lip balm again, a uh, chapstick, and it's as far as I can tell, still good. Um, and that had beeswax and a little bit of, of honey in it without any vitamin E. Now, we have used vitamin E in some recipes here before, but uh, this stuff was stuff I made at home without the vitamin E. Let's see. Uh, oh, well, now here's here's... This is, this is one of those times where I really enjoy doing this because this is a great idea. Um, so the question before about using silicone spray um, for a releasogen and sort of my, my reluctance to do that, well, this person says, well, how about using olive oil to release? So, uh, and, and actually, um, I've got a little manual pump-up sprayer that we fill up at home with olive oil. And, uh, and you can pump it up to pressurize it, so you can use it almost like an aerosol sprayer, but of course it uses just compressed air that is manually pumped into this container. So if you've got something like that, yeah, you can, you can use that olive oil and, and put a thin little layer uh, inside your mold um, to help with that. That's, uh, that's great. Um, Mm, any thoughts on using propolis, and how would you do it? The problem with propolis um, is that it doesn't readily dissolve in water, and it doesn't readily dissolve in um, the oils either. So you've got to make a tincture. A lot of times people use alcohol to do that. Um, and so you've got to make that tincture first so that you get it in, into a liquid before you can add it. And you can certainly experiment with that. Again, um, when I was pulling together this presentation, um, I've used different recipes in the past, but I wanted to try something different. So we went online. Uh, some, the person that does a lot of soap stuff for us went online and found these recipes. And I did some work, too. There's tons of recipes out there. And many of them uh, you will find using propolis. So you can do that. Can you use the lotion bar recipe for lip balm? Sure. Yeah. Uh, I suspect you, you, you could. I'm trying to think a little bit. Unfortunately, I don't have one of those bars. I've got the skin cream here in front of me, but the bars uh, I've sort of given out. It might be a little hard um, as, a, as a lip balm. Um, 
it might be okay if you put it in uh, like a, one of those little uh, lip balm containers rather than a tube where you use your finger to sort of rub it and get it warm and get a little bit of the uh, lotion on your finger and then use the, your fingertip to rub it on your lips. But if you put it in a tube, depending on, on what you like, uh, it would be too hard for me. I would like a little bit softer lip balm myself. But you can try it. And what you can do there, too, is, like I said, test this recipe. In that case, you're talking about the lotion bar recipe, which is, let me scroll on down here. Uh, lotion bar, lotion bar, where's the lotion bar recipe? Keep on going down. Um, here's the lotion bar recipe. So you can make this. Once you get your uh, ingredients melted and combined, take a, a spoon, scoop a little out, pour it on some wax paper, or put it on the countertop or whatever, let it harden and then try and um, uh, sort of scrape it up. Uh, you could probably, if you put it on wax paper, sort of break the, uh, the cooled lotion piece, if you will, off of that wax paper, and you can try and rub it on, on your lips. It won't be a true test as, as it would be if it were in a tube, but it'll give you some idea of just how uh, it's going to work on your, as, as a chapstick. Um, does the scent of the sweet almond oil uh, conflict with essential oils? The sweet almond oil is, is rather subtle, um, the uh, odor of the, the sweet almond oil used in the recipes. The, the essential oils, or fragrance oils, if you want to use those, are quite concentrated. It does not take much to um, uh, scent the product. And again, it's going to be personal preference. I do not like something that's very uh, strong smelling in terms of, uh, of the essential oils, whether it be the cedar wood or honeysuckle or lilac or whatever it may be. Um, I don't care for something that's, that's very strong. And so um, you may want something a little stronger, but just these few drops of essential oil, and I think I put in about four, made three of these lotion bars that were about this size, and they were probably, um, uh, well, they're probably around two and a half ounces each, maybe two ounces by the time they were poured, and it made uh, these three cake molds, and it was strong enough to, to smell with just those four drops. So that gives you some idea of the concentration of them, so it's pretty easy to overwhelm that sweet almond oil. Um, what about bee pollen as an addition? This is, uh, uh, you can, yeah, you can do it. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it as something that uh, is going to uh, be like a, a moisturizing cream. Maybe it's sort of like a, an exfoliating cream because if you get, depending on the pollen you use, if you use sort of freeze-dried, bee pollen, those, those pollen grains can be fairly hard. Even though they're going to soften, um, it's still going to be fairly hard. And um, on your skin, it may be a, a little rough. Now, in soaps, uh, we did some here on soaps. There you're using water, which is going to help soften it up. So you've got to be a little cautious there. Uh, let's see. What are, what are some other essential oils that you have used and liked? Um, well, of course, if you're talking uh, lip balms, the spearmint is quite popular. Um, we have uh, cedar essential oils. We've got cedar wood, eucalyptus, lavender, lemon, uh, peppermint, rosemary, spearmint, tea tree, uh, lemongrass, and patchouli. For the lip balms, spearmint, peppermint, uh, those are... Uh, the, the lemon, lemongrass, those are very popular. Um, if you're talking soaps, the tea tree is very, very popular. Um, also, the, the lavender. The lilac that we used is a, is a fragrance oil. We also used honeysuckle in some test bars that we made here. That's a very popular one. Uh, rose is a popular one. Um, so we do have quite a selection, um, and it's just a matter of your personal preference. Um, let's see. So here's a question about a lip balm in the future. 
if you go to our YouTube channel, you'll see that we've done one in the past. And so you can see the, uh, the webinar on the lip balm. Uh, that was done a year ago, I think, about this time last year, I think it was. Where's the best place to buy shea butter? Well, that's, this, is, this, is a, this is a real question, folks. This is not me doing a shameless plug, but Brushy Mountain Bee Farm, of course. Uh, we carry shea butter. We carry all the ingredients that we've talked about here this evening. Um, with that, uh, that's the questions for this evening. So we're, it was a relatively short webinar. What I would encourage is um, go to the web, type in beeswax skin cream recipes or uh, honey skin cream recipes and do a little searching. Find one you like and try it. Do a small batch, experiment, tweak it, make it your own, add a little extra beeswax to harden it up, add a little extra olive oil to make it a little softer, whatever the case may be, and um, experiment. But these are relatively easy things to do. They use the beeswax that you're producing in your hives. They use the honey that you're producing in your hives. You do have to be careful with the honey because it is water-based as opposed to everything else, which is, a, which is an oil-based, so they can separate. So you don't want to get too carried away unless you start to add emulsifiers to help uh, incorporate those two different uh, types of ingredients. Um, but you can do it relatively inexpensive. The pots that we've used in this set, you know, it was $20 for a three-pot uh, three set with some utensils. The poor pots, uh, relatively inexpensive. The most expensive thing that we uh, pictured here this evening was that uh, hot plate. But if you are careful, you can use uh, your stove, especially since you're using a double boiler. Never, ever melt uh, beeswax or anything else directly on the stove. You always want to use that double boiler. And be very, very careful because these are, of course, flammable products. So you don't want to spill it onto a hot uh, coil on your stove which, where it could catch fire. But the, you can do these things very inexpensively. They're great Christmas gifts. They're great at the holiday times. And uh, they're also wonderful for yourself to use uh, during the cold winter months. So I hope you go out there. Give it a try. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. I hope you found this useful and informative. And I hope to hear all of you trying uh, to make some of these things. Best of luck. Have a wonderful evening. Thanks for tuning in, and we will see you next time. Until then, have a wonderful evening and a great fall uh, season. Thank you. Bye-bye.